Well, as Anthony said, my name is Carlos Cordova, and my talk is going to be about the spider ecosystem of plugins. So these are several uh, plugins, third-party plugins that we have developed during the last six months, and that extend spider in several interesting and novel ways. So uh, this is my third year work, my third year in a row talking at SciPy, and the second year. Uh, talking specific, specifically about Spider, so I'm very happy to be here today. For those who don't know me, I am at C Cordova 12, uh, almost everywhere, on GitHub, Twitter, uh, and also on Facebook. Um, currently, I'm working as a software developer for Continuum Analytics, working all the time for Spider. I'm also the current maintainer of Spider, and I'm doing a PhD in industrial engineering at Los Andes University in Colombia. And for those who don't know them, these are the people that compose the spider team. So with the exception of Jitsen Nissen, who is this guy here, um, and who is a lecturer in the, at the University of Leeds, of Leeds in England, all the other developers uh, are hired by Continuum to work in Spider 2. And it is their work that I'm going to show you uh, to you today. So before I start to talking about uh, these plugins, I'm going to show you a little bit, very briefly, how, uh, what Spider is for the new beginners. So Spider is basically, um, a, a desktop application that tries to be very close to MATLAB. So it comes with an editor where you write code here in the left, and a console where you run that code here on the right, and also we have a variable explorer or work, workspace or environment for those who come from R or from MATLAB, and we have also uh, a documentation viewer called help, where you can help, you can get help of the object that you are using in the editor or in the console. So for example, let me evaluate a very simple expression here in the console, A equals 10, and we see in the variable explorer that this variable is listed here. So this variable explorer works for not only for numbers as in this case, but also for lists, di lists dictionaries, tuples, and numpy arrays and data frames too. And uh, this help can be obtained, for example, let's say I import a numpy, as mp as always, and I want to get the documentation of numpy scene, so I press Control I, and I, I can, you can see that here is the documentation rendered as a web page. Usually, the documentation of documentation of Python objects is uh, presented as or is written as plain text. So we take that plain text and render it as a web page and show it there. Okay. So let's come back to the plugins. So the first plugin that I'm going to show you is called Spider Notebook, and you probably guess what this plugin is about. It's about integrating the Jupyter Notebook inside the Spider to give it uh, a very desktop-like uh, experience to the notebook. And also, add on top of that, several new functionality because the notebook now is running inside the Spider. So what are the advantages of this plugin? First is that you don't need to run Jupyter Notebook in the directory where you want to start a, a new notebook server. Then you also, we also provide that, uh, this functionality that untitled notebooks are saved in a temporary directory so they don't clutter your, your file system while you're working with the notebook. The third advantage is that you can open and save notebooks anywhere in your file system without worrying about opening notebook servers in the directory where you want to save or, or open notebooks. And as I said, we also provide a couple of additional advantages because we embed the notebook in a spider. One of them is that you can inspect a 
notebook variables, so the notebook variables, in, in our beloved variable explorer, and also that you can very easily switch between notebooks using spider file switcher. So let me show you how this works. So, sorry. So when you install uh, the notebook, which is not really available, I plan to have it for this week, but unfortunately I didn't have time to do it. But I will do it this uh, weekend during the sprint. Uh, well, it can be seen here, but next to the editor, in here in the left uh, corner, there is another tab called Notebook. And as you can see, after you open a spider, you have an untitled notebook loaded for you. So you can start writing code. For example, that one, very simple. One plus one equals two. And if you want to try to close that notebook, and Spider finds that that notebook has some contents, then it asks you to save it. If, and if you want to save it, you can answer yes. And you can save it everywhere you want. So for example, let's say we save it here. We save it with the test name. And yeah. So we close that notebook in the background. We open a new server for you. And that notebook is now loaded in Spider with the name test and saved where, where you wanted to save it. In this case, for example, research test, although it can be seen quite clearly there. And you can open as, you, as many notebooks as you want. For example, I'm opening there no other untitled notebooks. So all those untitled notebooks are saved in a temporary directory, as I said, so you don't have to worry about them. And if there is no content in those notebooks, they are simply closed by a spider. And the kernel associated with that notebook is also closed for you. It's also killed for you, sorry. There is another advantage, and is that in this menu, on the right of the notebook, you can see a list of the recent notebooks that you have opened. So you can have access to them and load them inside here. For example, I have here another notebook called linear IPIMB placed in another directory, and this is the notebook. It has some linear regression analysis for some data and some graphics using Seaborn. Um, well, as I say, you can also open notebooks, read more notebooks, and this is the, interest, the most interesting functionality uh, that we add in top of, of this desktop integration is that you can open a console connected to the notebook. You can see here that this console has the same name, linear, as the notebook, linear. And let's say that we evaluate, for example, this couple of initial cells. So we have this data frame called, called data that it grabs some data from the internet and we go here to to the variable explorer and and you can see the data the data frame here in the variable explorer for your exploration you can see it, it contains all these columns and etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's a very wise, a very nice way to interact with notebooks and especially if you don't like to open notebooks through your web browser it, i think this interface is much more much more better and much richer and nicer to use than, than simply using a web browser. Okay, that's the first plugin. The next plugin uh, is called Spider Reports. And it lets you write, or it allows you to write scientific reports in Markdown. So scientific reports are composed of text, code, uh, graphics, and mathematical formulas. And there are several people that instead of writing these reports in Jupyter Notebooks prefer to use Mardan files for this task. And they, these people usually come from uh, the R community where they have tools like Nitor and R Markdown that, that, allows, you, that allows them to, to do these tasks well. And when they move to Python, they miss this kind of tool in, in this ecosystem. So what are the advantages of this approach? Well, first is that obviously Markdown files are plain text files, so they are quite easily versionable, which is not the case for notebooks. And second is that when they are rendered, these, um, these files 
are uh, evaluated in a linear order. So there can be no confusions in this case <clears throat> because of the current state of your variable or of the order of evaluation of your variables. So that makes, uh, which is also not the case in the notebook because you can have in a linear order and you can get confused quite easily because of that. So we, to create this plugin, we use a library called pwip, which uh, renders markdown files. Then we get the output as an HTML file and present them, present it in Spire. And this plugin only works on Python 3 because pwip only works on Python 3. So let me show you an example of this. So here I have this file in Markdown uh, with special editions or special syntax of the Pwe project, which is called no, no Web. And if I go here to the Run menu and run and click on this option, Render HTML, I can see it here, rendered, well, rendered as as an HTML file. So this, this is something that was asked for us um, for, um, because, well, in conversations with, the, with members of the R community, because they miss this kind of tool a lot. And we find it also very valuable. The third plugin is called uh, Spider Terminal. And this plugin uh, allows you to run Command line applications inside the Spire. So not all applications, not all command line applications can be run in Spider IPython console. And uh, for example, uh, sorry, for example, Git, htop, condor, pip need to be run in system terminals to be to run correctly or to work correctly. And that's why we created this plugin so that people don't leave, doesn't need to leave a spider to run these applications. So how this plugin work? Well, um, essentially it's a Tornado web app that serves XTermGS. XTermGS is a library in JavaScript that uh, uh, it's a terminal emulator. And the good thing, um, well, this is exactly the same way that uh, the Jupyter Notebook embeds system terminals inside inside the, the application. But the good thing about this is that, is that we have made this work on Windows 2. Use, and for that, we created a, a Python bindings a, called Pink, 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 YPT, WinPTY for a library called Wine, WinPTY, which is a pseudo terminal library to run applications on Windows. So that's something a uh, new that we provide over uh, the Jupyter the Jupyter terminal, which on, only runs on on Unix file systems, on Unix file operating systems. So here is the terminal. Well, cannot be seen quite clearly, but uh, it can run, for example, each stop there, or git lock. Oops, sorry, I don't have anything there. Uh, Well, you basically get the idea of how this, uh, this plugin works. So here I have a git repo, and there is git load there. So again, it's just a matter of convenience to run all these commands inside this pattern is, instead of going to an external, external terminal. And especially on Windows, people really like to have these, these uh, kind of terminals embedded inside the application to run commands there. And, um, and the last plugin is called Spider Unit Test. And it's, its name is also very simple. It means that you can, it allows you to run and inspect test results in Sunny Spider, and it supports uh, both PyTest and the Nose framework. So here we can, here you can see an example. Oops. This is a plugin, and I have here 
a simple text example with several tests that can be run by PyTest. So to configure this plugin, you have to go here and press configure, and it allows you to select the, the test framework that you want to use, and also the directory where, you, where your tests are placed. And in this case, it is placed here. I think it's here. So after configuring the, the plugin, we can run the test and we can see the results in Spider. So these green lines means that this test passed correctly. And we have here the, the test name, the message generated in case, in case of an error, and the time that the test, the test took to complete. And in this case, we, we see that this test this sets failed, and we can see where it failed and what's the error message. Also, this is just a way to, to give more functionality to Spider and to make users um, use these kind of tools inside the ID without, I mean, without having to resort to a terminal to run these kind of things. So, these were all the plugins that I have to show you today. I hope you like them and you use them. They are, well, still in a bit of an alpha phase. Uh, they are, well, I hope to release, it as a, to release them, as I said, uh, during the weekend. Uh, and that's what the sprints are for. And finally, I would like to thank uh, Travis Oliphant for their support because he, uh, he sponsored uh, all the Spider team that I showed you, showed you at the beginning, and without his support and the continuing support, we won't be, we wouldn't be able to create these plugins. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, thanks. I was curious if you could use um, Spider and serve notebooks from an external server into the interface? Yeah, um, not right now. <laughs> um, well, these, I mean, we could probably do it, but then the notebooks, uh, it wouldn't be possible to connect the notebooks to the variable explorer. So as you can see here, uh, there is a ta the, the Kernel name is spider tree, Python tree spider. So we have created a special kernel to be able to transfer information between the kernel and, and the spider interface. So it is possible to, to serve notebooks from external servers, but they, they won't be connected to the other facilities of spider. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you.